welcome to the next session. We have now, I think, 10 o'clock, yes. And it's Roberto Poli talking about the 101 of systems administration and for sure focusing on Python and not at AVK, what I heard. And so, yeah, enjoy. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I am Roberto Bolli. Uh, I work in Babel, which is the proud sponsor of this talk and of my hotel bill. Uh, today we will see how to use and learn elements of statistic. It's not a statistic course uh, with Python. Uh, before starting, even also I would like to apologize for my English. I hope that English-speaking people uh, can forgive. <laughs> Go on. Uh, we will see uh, a latency issue that affects uh, one of our, our, our customers and how in a very few minutes we were able to understand what was happening and what was not happening. Uh, we understood uh, all those things using correlation and combining data. Then we provide a lot of nice plots that uh, allowed our customer uh, to, um, to say that all that were happening wasn't his fault. Uh, everything uh, was done with SciPy and Matplotlib. Uh, his problem, the customer problems, was uh, episodic uh, network latency issues. Uh, we had log traces with uh, message sizes, the number of peers of the communication, and the number of retransmission on end errors in, in this network. Uh, the customer asked us, do we need to scale? Uh, are those latency issues related to uh, some peak condition? And well, uh, we found a rapid answer using Python. Uh, how we did uh, it? Uh, because Python provides basic statistics like the mean that we will uh, denote with the bear on the X and using standard deviation, which is actually uh, an indicator uh, of how the mean is a, uh, is a good uh, descriptor of our data series. If the mean is good, the standard deviation is low. Uh, if the mean is not a good indicator, uh, the standard deviation is high. Uh, the T uh, variable contains an extract of our data. There is a timestamp, uh, a latency indicator in seconds, and the number of peers, and there are other indicators just like the message size, the number of retransmission. Uh, you can see that getting uh, a base description of all uh, those uh, fields is really easy, it's just one line, because Python provides max and minimum indicator, and mean and standard deviation are built in uh, SciPy. Now, data distribution. The second thing uh, you do is to create a distribution. That is, uh, on the x-axis, you have got some time slots, for, for example. This one is a, a ping round trip distribution. It says we have three uh, ping returning between uh, 158 and 159 milliseconds. Uh, four pings return between 159 and 160, and so on. Uh, the uh, faster way to create a distribution with Python is using uh, Matplotlib, which is a, that is a plotting uh, library. When we plot an histogram, for example, a, a histogram of latencies, uh, 
ping round trip time is actually a lot a network latency. Uh, the history um, we have got two outputs. One output is the plot. The other output is a triple. The interesting values in this time are the frequencies. That is how many uh, pings return. Three is a frequency, four is a frequency, uh, two is a frequency, and the beans. The beans are just like, uh, yes, beans or, or buckets uh, are on the x axis. So the 158 to 159 bean, and so on. Uh, to get the distribution, just use zip, which tie together two lists or iterables. Now, correlation. We have got a description of our data. Uh, but now we ask, are two data series related? Is there a relation between the number of retries and the latency uh, or whatever? Uh, if we, uh, for shortness, use delta x, just like the difference from an item in the series and the mean, <coughs> Mr. Pearson, that was a statistician, answered with this formula. Uh, it seemed complicated if uh, you uh, are, uh, if your high school time are uh, Far, but if you just mind back uh, to your high school, it's actually quite easy. It uh, just checks if the values of the X and the Y series uh, move together on the same line. Uh, if, for example, uh, both uh, X and uh, Y move uh, together, they start, those differences start with negative values. So the product is positive. And they move on, and uh, if they reach the mean together, they will be zero together. And if they move together on, the product will still be uh, positive. So uh, uh, if you... Uh, try with uh, your IPython console uh, with some data sets, you actually find that this formula is quite reasonable. Uh, so, rho defines if the values move together on the same line. But anyway, you must plot. These are uh, various uh, scatter plot uh, with their uh, Pearson value. Uh, on the first line, we can see that we have an one uh, relation value. And then uh, when the data began to be uh, unrelated, th that value uh, goes to zero. And then uh, it starts to be, again, uh, again, a negative value when the relation is not direct but uh, inverse. So uh, when one uh, data set grows and the other uh, decrease. Uh, but there are uh, even non uh, linear cases where we have a zero correlation value. But actually, we could find uh, that, that those data are related, or there are some patterns in the data. So you always should plot. Uh, probability indicator. Python SciPy provides a correlation function. This function returns two values. The first one is the correlation coefficient that we just described. These values are between minus one, uh, as said before, when one data grows and the other decrease, and uh, plus one when both data grows together. <coughs> uh, there is one other uh, value, the probability indicator, uh, that is, its definition is quite tricky, but let's say that uh, this value uh, 
tells us when uh, such kind of data sets are produ produced by uncorrelated system. So if the probability is high, the system uh, are not correlated. If the probability is low, then those values are unlikely produced by an uncorrelated system. So uh, this, uh, if you have got a Python shell, you can just try uh, and check and experience uh, what you can get. Uh, the A and B values are just like a straight line, and they have a one correlation and zero probability. Uh, that is, it's unlikely that random data can produce a straight line. While getting uh, two random values, <coughs> two random data sets, uh, we can see that the correlation is low. It, it is low. I, I don't care if it's positive or negative, uh, but it's, it's, up, its absolute value is low. But the probability that those data are unrelated is quite high, is about 17, uh, 70%. Now, combination. Return to our original problem. We have got various data sets. We want to uh, understand which of them and if uh, are related. Uh, when we should um, uh, the e, when we should do such kind of analysis, the idle tools module is is a gold point, a gold, uh, good, good place uh, to check. Uh, combinations were are quite an intuitive concept. Uh, they just find all uh, every possibilities in which I can mix uh, a set of items without repetitions. Uh, we use it uh, to combine all table keys. So we will combine the uh, latency uh, with the errors, the uh, errors with the message size, and so on. And now, uh, this is how we get our results. Simply, we use combination to net fish for all possible uh, correlation and probability values between all our data series. Uh, if the correlation is over a given threshold, we print something. Or if the probability is lower than threshold, uh, again, we print those values. Uh, this is uh, just a starting point, but we are concentrating uh, our customer wanted to know something uh, quickly. Uh, we uh, started with concentrating on what could be more likely uh, a relation uh, with the latency. So uh, the, the relation between latency and errors is higher or not? Uh, is this clear? I think um, if you're acquainted with Python, it is. <clears throat> but well, uh, remember the slide before. Uh, linear correlation is not everything. Uh, we should use our eyes. And uh, actually, Matplotlib uh, allows us to save the plots. So, what we'll do, will we do? We will save all the possible combination of our data and our data sets, put uh, sticking uh, on the plots all the possible information. So the uh, relation indicator, the probability indicator, uh, the data series we mixed and then save. That could produce 
30 or 40 graphs, but we can just watch it with a Gwen view or whatever your uh, uh, image visualization. Uh, and well, at that point, uh, you can uh, easily check if that plot tells you something. <coughs> this is an example plot with the buffer size and the CPU weight. Uh, hey, there is an I relation indicator and a, and a zero probability indicator. Those data are probably related. Uh, we can see that when the CPU weight is low, the buffer is constant. But when uh, there is I.O., the buffer increase. So there is a, a surely a relation. If that relation is a straight line, or uh, the uh, relation is just like moving from CPU weight at a constant rate on the buffer side, and then when the CPU weight starts to be for three or four seconds at 50, uh, 40%, then uh, the buffer starts to, to grow. Well, this is uh, a first step of analysis. But for example, if, uh, if you're uh, searching something, uh, this kind of plot is something you should, uh, it's a good starting point for investigation. Then, uh, what lack, lacks in the um, previous graph was colors and a time indicator. Uh, have, uh, we have not plot time, so we uh, actually uh, don't know if, if the right side is the one, uh, is the starting point and the end side is the end point, for example, because after uh, CPU work, we flash the buffer, for example, <clears throat> or if uh, the left part is the starting point and the right, the end point, and I stopped myself in uh, together data while uh, buffer was working. Using uh, colors, I can understand better what uh, what's happening. And well, again, iter tools. Cycle makes an iterable, uh, uh, continuous iterable. So uh, colors next. Colors.next uh, returns R, G, B, and again, R, G, B. Uh, it's a simple case, just, uh, uh, I just trace morning, afternoon, and night. Uh, morning with red, afternoon with green, and night with blue. I, uh, I don't use, I just use those compression syntax to split data sets in three chunks. And then I start the first one in the morning uh, in red using uh, labeling it uh, with red. I could even uh, add um, Pearson and probability indicator on the single chunk. And then, yes, always set the title, save the plot, and so on. Boom, you're going to end, we, I w was fast. So this is one sample plot uh, with latency on the X axis and throughput on the Y axis. Uh, the color denotes the time in the day. Uh, we can see clearly that uh, if we look at higher latency above three seconds, okay? Uh, it's not a matter of throughput or size, okay? Uh, the higher latency match with lower throughput. Moreover, uh, with this plot, we have even um, a 
an indicator of the ability of the system, uh, of the speed of the system. Because we can see that if we focus just on the uh, first time slot between zero and one second, we can see that uh, there is actually an influence of throughput on latency. But it's, uh, this influence ends after one and a half second. Uh, and that, uh, that line uh, could, uh, could be a sort of throughput speed uh, of the system. Uh, we can see, uh, moreover, that all the, plot, all, all the points, all the red points, uh, with uh, a higher uh, throughput are in the same part of the day. So if, for example, we check that mm, those data are uh, wrong uh, or there is a problem uh, with those kind of data, we, the plot tells us that uh, points us to a precise part of the day uh, to check. Another one, uh, a correlation. This is another uh, scatter plot with uh, size of the packet and the retry. We can see that there is no relation. The latency problem was not related to the size of the packets. Uh, we can see, moreover, that uh, higher size corresponds to uh, a low, lower number of retries. So when the packet size is high, uh, there are no problems. But the problems of retries are concentrated in uh, the green part of the day. So we can check if that uh, in that part of the day, uh, could have been some problem on the network, for example, or some uh, problem related to some, uh, a part of our clients. And uh, all those plots were produced in 30 seconds clock. So once you have the data, just pass those snippets, get your 40 plots, and they'll tell you almost everything. So, yeah, again, latency wasn't related to packet size or system throughput. Errors were not related to packet size. We even discovered the system throughput uh, using those straight line uh, capping uh, the plots. All these in 30 minutes. The other time was just parsing the logs. <laughs> it was the hardest part of the, of the problem. Uh, wrap up. Use statistics. It's easy. Use the correlation coefficient, but don't use it to exclude relation. Use plots. Plots, plots, and then, yes, continue to collect results. Okay, 24 minutes. That's all, folks. Hope you enjoyed and. <laughs> Data snippets could be useful. Uh, don't know if there are questions, but well, that's it. So we have some time for questions. Any questions? Go to the come to the microphones. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. there is one. Uh, I didn't understand why are you using combination. Can you give like three examples of what pairs of combinations you were trying and why do you have to randomize that? Okay. As, as I didn't know uh, how the system worked, the first time to do was to combine all those data series using combination will uh, return late and peers, late and errors, 
peers and errors. Uh, maybe mm, uh, um, the screen is smaller. No, uh, it's uh, from Kiss. Uh, ABC range ten. Uh, okay, let's imagine instead of ABC, I've got retries, latency, time. Okay, so the combination lets me tie every possible uh, value, every possible data set with another one. Uh, maybe this is simple. Okay, imagine a is latency, B is throughput, C is retries. I've got all the possible combination with, between data, and uh, I can evaluate the relation values or plot on every possible, uh, uh, what? Well, uh, uh, it, it, what is peers? What is? So one of your answers, peers. Peers was the number of the computer in the network. There's another question. Yeah, I have a quick question. I see that with these permutations, you get a lot of different combinations. Did you have any problem with spurious correlations with high significance levels? Could you uh, detect them as false correlations, not really related, or you didn't have this I, problem? I, I, actually, uh, uh, there is no false correlation uh, because uh, it's just a number, in, if, if I understood the question. The Pearson indicator is just applying a formula that uh, tells you if those data are, uh, plotting those data, you get something like a straight line. So uh, uh, for this reason, I always say uh, you should plot because, uh, and obviously uh, you should uh, then learn how the system works. These are indicators because I made 40 plots. Uh, I didn't know the system. So uh, I, need, I needed something, I needed the stack to say we, uh, to steal the words of Costanze. Uh, so I got the stack. Then the stack, I started to find the needle. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Roberto. It was a great talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>